Three Reasons Why Christians Don't Understand Bible Prophecy Sadly, most Christians don't understand Bible prophecy. They are confused about the Second Coming, the Rapture, the Tribulation, the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, the Millennial Kingdom, the Great White Throne Judgment, and many other future events described in Scripture. Greetings, I'm Dr. Paul Felter. Welcome to my video podcast where I expose church fallacies and flawed Christian traditions with Bible truth. We let the Bible speak for itself. If you appreciate the video podcast, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or my podcast channel named Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. Also, please visit my website, breadoflife.media, for additional resources, including my free PDF chart of your Bible, Rightly Divided. What are the three reasons why most Christians don't understand Bible prophecy? 1. You don't study the Old Testament. All of the foundational passages concerning prophecy are in the Old Testament, with the one exception of the rapture. The rapture is part of the revelation of the dispensation of grace given only to the Apostle Paul. Those passages are found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Books like Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, and the Minor Prophets should be studied first to understand God's plan for Israel, including Jesus' first coming, second coming, crucifixion, his resurrection, and the Millennial Kingdom, etc. You must understand God's plan for these events to determine how the dispensation of grace fits in God's program and his purpose. The New Testament prophecies like the Olivet Discourse of Matthew 24 and 25, Mark 13, Luke 21, and the Book of Revelation should be studied after you have a working knowledge of Old Testament prophecy. As with any study, you start at the beginning, Genesis. There's a good reason the Book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. Without a working knowledge of the previous 65 books, the revelation will be impossible for you to understand. Sadly, many believers, pastors, and teachers don't teach the Old Testament. They believe the creation story and the history of the Jews have little or no application to the modern church. Many mainline denominations believe in replacement theology. They believe God is finished with the Jews and has replaced them with the Gentiles, the church. With that perspective, why bother with the Old Testament as it mostly pertains to a people God is done with as they crucified their Messiah? They believe God has permanently turned his attention to the Gentiles, rendering Israel to the dustbin of history. Of course, the doctrine of replacement theology is wrong. God made a covenant with Israel. He is not a covenant breaker. He is faithful and true. For the Lord will not forsake his people, for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. 1 Samuel 12, 22. The Lord will not forsake or abandon Israel. He will protect and preserve his great name. He will keep the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and King David. Not because the Jews are such great saints, they are not. But God will be faithful to his word for his own name's sake. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake. For our backslidings are many, we have sinned against thee. Jeremiah 14, 7. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Ezekiel 36.22 There are many more passages showing that God will protect his holy name for his name's sake alone. So the idea that God is through with Israel contradicts both Scripture and the nature of God. He is faithful and true, not a covenant breaker. 
Replacement theology is a lie perpetrated on the Church of Rome by early church fathers like Origen and Augustine. Don't get caught up in that anti-Semitic lie. Number two, why Christians don't understand Bible prophecy is you have not yet discovered God's overall plan for the ages. Many people ignore most of the Old Testament, but enjoy reading the Psalms and Proverbs. That's great, but those books are poetic, not prophetic. They contain no detailed passages about God's plan for the ages. God has given us an outline of his prophetic plan found in the Old Testament. The prophetic writers of the New Testament, like Matthew and John, wrote expecting their readers to have an understanding of Old Testament prophecies. That's why many details are not explained. They assumed the reader was familiar with the previous writings of the major and minor prophets. Prophets like Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah are labeled major prophets because their writings are long. Others like Daniel, Joel, and Zechariah are minor prophets only because their writings are short, not because they are somehow less important. From Adam to the millennial reign are revealed in the Old Testament. The first prophetic kingdom wherein Israel grew to a great nation was Egypt. Following Egypt was Assyria, then Babylon, then the Medo-Persian Empire, Greece under Alexander the Great, and then Rome. Moses writes about Egypt. Isaiah prophesies Assyria taking the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity. Jeremiah prophesies about Babylon invading the southern kingdom of Judah. Daniel predicts the Medo-Persian Empire, Greek, and Roman empires, along with the final empire controlled by the Antichrist immediately prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. As an example of a New Testament writer, expecting the reader to know and understand these prophecies is found in Revelation 17, verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. If you are familiar with the Old Testament prophecies, you know that the five fallen kings or kingdoms are Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. The kingdom that is, at the time of John's writing, was Rome. The one that is yet to come is the Antichrist kingdom that exists for a short period, primarily the last half of the seven-year tribulation. The first and second comings of Jesus Christ are revealed in the Old Testament. Isaiah writes in chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is an interesting verse, as the first and second comings of Jesus Christ are in the same sentence. A child is born is the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem. A son is given is Jesus' vicarious death on the cross. But the government of Israel has yet to be upon his shoulders. That will happen during the Millennial Kingdom. Isaiah could not see the 2,000-year gap between the first and second comings of Jesus Christ, as the church age is not found in Old Testament prophecy. That was a revelation from Jesus Christ given to the Apostle Paul after his encounter with the Lord on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, and after spending three years in Arabia with the Lord. Isaiah prophesied the coming of the Messiah as a singular event. The prophet Zechariah did the same in chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee! He is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea, even to sea, and from the river, even to the ends of the earth.
Zechariah 9, 9, and 10. Zechariah proclaims the king of Israel will arrive at Jerusalem riding a donkey. We know this as Palm Sunday. Then he will defeat the enemies of Israel and set up his dominion or kingdom from sea to sea and to the ends of the earth. However, between Palm Sunday and Messiah defeating the enemies of Israel, there is a 2,000-year gap. But even though we are in that 2,000-year gap, all prophetic scripture will be fulfilled. Once we understand his plan, all prophetic scriptures will harmonize. Again, please remember that the rapture is not part of Old Testament prophecy, so it does not harmonize with the prophetic scriptures. This is one reason why our Apostle Paul commands us to rightly divide the word of truth. We are to divide Israel from the church. Prophecies for Israel are not for the church. The mystery of the rapture is not for Israel. If you do not rightly divide, you will be confused. The third reason for Christians not understanding Bible prophecy is you have no idea where or how to begin. Most Christians have never been taught how to study the Bible. How many times have you heard a new Christian being told to begin their Bible study with the Gospel of John? Sounds very pious, but it's wrong. Why would you start a new believer reading a gospel written to Israel under the law of Moses? New believers should start with Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, and then Philippians. They need to first learn the doctrines of the body of Christ, the church. Then they will not need to unlearn bogus Christian tradition and concepts written for Israel under the law. We hear sermons and studies based on a single passage from the Word. Christians are taught to cherry-pick the passages they like and ignore the rest, as that is what most pastors do. Most are never taught how to do an exegetical verse-by-verse -verse Bible study. So the concept of deconstructing a passage of Scripture, word by word, is foreign to most Christians. The result is a very shallow or superficial understanding of God's Word. Very sad. But that is the condition of most Christians in America. The New Testament is not the place to begin a prophetic study. We must begin in the Old Testament and work our way to the book of Revelation as prophecy builds upon itself. Matthew chapter 24 has more information than Daniel about the seven-year tribulation. Revelation chapter 6 through 19 has more information than Matthew 24. Prophecy is like a jigsaw puzzle or a Rubik's Cube. Where do you start? Matthew? Daniel? Genesis? No. Start in Isaiah, working your way through the Old Testament prophets. Pay special attention to the book of Daniel, as that has timelines in chapters 2, 7, and 9. Understanding prophecy is critical as we are living in the end times. Jesus is coming soon for his body, the church. Are you saved? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, was buried, and rose again the third day? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ and are trusting in him alone for your salvation? If you cannot answer those questions with an enthusiastic, heartfelt yes, then what are you waiting for? Right now, believe in your heart and mind that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, was buried, and rose again the third day. Give your life to Jesus and trust him for your salvation. Do it now. Time is short. It's the most important decision of your life. Don't put it off another day. There are only two final destinations for you, I, and everyone else. Heavenly places with Jesus or the lake of fire. It's your choice. Choose wisely. Understanding how and why we must rightly divide the word changed my life, changed my insight into God's word, unraveling many issues and inconsistencies in scriptures. Once you determine the correct audience of a passage, then the proper application can be made. Most of your Bible is about Israel, as they are God's chosen people. Only a small portion is written specifically to the church, the body of Christ. That is the epistles of Paul, Romans through Philemon. Paul is the sole apostle to the Gentiles. That's us. The Bible is written 
for us, but not all written to us. It's all truth, but not all our truth. That is why Paul states that we must rightly divide the word of truth. We must divide truth from truth. There is a truth for Israel and a truth for the church. We must divide Israel from the church, law from grace, works from faith, God's earthly program for Israel from his heavenly program for us, the body of Christ. It's called right division. An integral part of understanding your Bible is to see God's timeline from Genesis to Revelation in chart format. I have two such works available in print and PDF. The first is a free, rightly dividing the word of truth chart in landscape format. This chart displays God's timeline from Genesis to Revelation. It alone is a tremendous help in understanding the Bible and can easily be downloaded from my website. Second, a letter-sized booklet named The Master Key to Understanding the Bible. This 64-page guide is full color and professionally printed. It has 13 large, full-color charts displaying the right division concept in great detail. The guide covers the same materials as the podcast and videos and is a must-have companion for the serious student of the Bible. The Master Key is also available in audiobook from Amazon Audible. Both are available on my website, breadoflife.media. If you have enjoyed the video podcast, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast channel, Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. Well, thank you for joining me today. See you next time, and God bless.